What's going on guys? Greg here, Rack and Rock Chronicles, and we are back with some more fly fishing gear. Uh, and some of you know that I've been kind of waiting for this rod. Um, when I've talked about the other rods that both Keith and I are using, so we basically sat down and we decided that we were each going to try to find the right rod in three different categories. So we had small stream, so two, three, maybe four weight, um, in a shorter style rod, mainly for backcountry, native type fish, small streams, you know, we're talking nothing probably over 12 to 15 feet. Um, so, you know, you're going to be under canopy, you're going to be under a bunch of different things. Um, so you don't want that long rod because it's going to end up catching something. The next category was the bigger water. Um, so over that 12 to 15 feet, uh, you know, width of the stream or river, uh, still water, you know, something that had the ability to cast a, a decent distance, um, and then a nymphing setup. So, uh, Keith, as you remember, on the one rod we haven't shown you yet, but we'll show that one. Uh, it'll be coming up here in the next couple episodes. But um, so Keith went with the moonlit lunar S glass for his small stream. He went with a Jackson Hole Fly Company, four weight with a heavier backbone to it uh, for big water, and then a Loop Opti Peak in the nymphing rod. I, in my big water rod, you already saw, was the Yampa rod, the Heathen, um, and then my nymphing setup was the Syndicate P2, which you've also seen. So I've been patiently waiting, uh, and I'm glad that I patiently waited um, for this rod to come in. So I'm actually, this is the rod two, and the maker of this rod is JP Ross Fly Rods uh, out of New York. And JP makes a bunch of different rods, um, but this is one of the ones that he is definitely well known for. This is the Beaver Meadow. Um, so this is my small stream setup. And this one I can actually almost, I should, should be able to put this together here in, in the studio without uh, hitting anything. But I'm going to go over some detail first. So number one, this is a 6 foot 6, 2, 3 weight, um, just beautiful design. JP knows how to build a rod, let's put it that way. So uh, we'll get a little up close here. So you got Beaver Meadow, and there's his logo right there. Um, on the real seat, you've got a, a nice little native trout swimming. Uh, you've got the J.P. Ross logo on the butt and uh, the American flag. And these have um, basically a serial number almost, um, right up, right where it says six foot six, no, two three weight. Uh, there's almost like a serial number after it which is really cool because these are, you know, built, hand-built rods. Um, so I'm going to try to put this together. I don't want to bump the ceiling in the studio with it. Um, and if you remember me talking about the uh, dots to line up, JP does put them on this rod, so it makes it super easy to line your guides up to your real seat. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and we're just getting... Looks like I should be able to do it without whacking the ceiling in here, but downfall of the studio is it's hard to see because you guys don't see the ceiling in here, but where I'm standing it actually slopes down um, to the fireplace here, so I just have to be careful and we also have a big ceiling fan in here that I don't want it to hit. Um, I would probably start crying on camera if I, if I did that and broke the tip. Um, so yeah, I have it all together, it's just a slightly taller than I am, so that's what's good. So here it is all together, uh, really nice green color where the guides are wrapped. It's a, a lighter green, um, but this rod is so lightweight and the action on it is great. And again, this is going to be that native type water. So small streams, pocket water. Um, and I can get in under the canopy of trees. You know, you still have to watch for like, especially in PA rhododendrons and stuff where they're right on the bank when you're casting, but 
I don't have to worry about too much overhead because the rod is short enough. Um, it does have a fly holder or a fly hook um, so you can hook the uh, fly in there so you can have it strung and I just I'm super excited to get on the water with this and I know uh, JP wants to know what I think about it for sure um, but you saw I posted pictures of this rod on our, our Facebook page um, when he sent me the pictures once it was almost done and it was you know in the drying stages uh, so I just I was like itching 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 to get it um, and what's really cool the rod tubes and one it's a metal rod tube um, he has the logos and engraving on the cap and you know that tube is super small so travel wise you know you're going out west somewhere you really don't even have to put that you can keep that in a backpack you don't have to worry about it you know banging in anything or falling out um, so I'm going to take this baby down real quick so I don't mess around and hit, hit it off the ceiling. And one of the things that you see a lot with fly rods is, you know, the, the baggy or the, the sleeve that the rod goes into. And most of them have ties on them. And I get why they have the ties. You know, um, that's pretty self-explanatory. But what I like about this, it just makes it a little bit easier to get the rod out and back in is there isn't a flap on this and there are no strings so once I get the rod in I don't have to worry about stuff getting in the way when I'm trying to get it back in the tube I don't have to worry about stuff being in the way when I'm trying to get it out and basically whoop, as I dropped it um, the little tab that I'll show you here in a second is so that once it's in the tube you have something to grab onto to get it back out so there's a little tab right there he's got his logo right there as well um, so it goes down nice together you don't have to worry about it catching and then basically I just take where that tab is and push it down so that the tab is sticking up and it is a screw top um, tube and it does have an o-ring on it so if water or dust you know nothing's going to get in there uh, kind of give you a better look right up there is where the o-ring is it is a uh, a positive grip on the the handle the outside of the, the lid is engraved or uh, checkered so that you can grab a hold of it but uh, I mean that's how tall it is it might be maybe two feet if that um, so sliding in the outside of your backpack in a water bottle pocket just strap it so you don't have to worry about it falling out um, but if you follow JP on Facebook or Instagram he's always posting pictures of rods that he's working on um, some of them I mean are just unbelievable now the beaver meadow is not the only rod he makes he makes nymphing rods he makes you know standard weight four or five six weight um, fly rods um, he, I believe, does some rod blanks, I think I've seen on the website. And he has some awesome, awesome merch. Um, so I think a couple episodes ago, I had a t-shirt on that had a rooster holding a fly rod behind his back. Um, that's a J.P. Ross uh, shirt. Um, so stay tuned for more, guys. I'm hoping you get on the water. There are some native streams that are already open here in Pennsylvania, or they don't close. Um, so I'm going to try to get out hopefully this weekend, if not really next week. And, and fish this thing because it's killing me um, so stay tuned for more on this rod for sure but you'll see it in the show you'll see more demos and whatnot here on YouTube so we appreciate it guys stay tuned check out JP Ross jprossflyrods.com and uh, show them some love if you're in the market for a new rod uh, if you want something a little outside of the standard so you know custom built um, kind of what you're looking for um, rather than just you know uh, something that's built with what you have in mind but you want something specific whether it's color uh, real seat choices things like that so check them out we will be back and we'll talk to you later